I've always loved and grown up with African sculpture, in particular with my stepfather, who was an avid collector and naturally very inspired by Australian Indigenous art, but also inspired by New Guinean Highland art. So I love the concept of carving in. I've been painting for about, I don't know exactly, but say 25 years. Definitely in that first decade was a two-dimensional painting. But in a bucket in the studio was a, was a belt sander that a carpenter had left for a job that he did on a window. And I think it sat in that bucket for like two years, this belt sander. And just one day painting on board, I, I looked in the bucket and saw it. And I guess that connection came was I felt like um, hitting a picture with it. And from that moment, it just ignited uh, the ability to carve in versus layer on paint. And then came Kane. I watched a documentary about a blind man who was a basket weaver when I was young. And I think that also finally germinated like a seed. And so I bought some cane and learned how to wet it and bend it and put it into the pictures. You know, I think that the reasoning was I was spending so much time in mangroves with the little roots that it connected me to that. And also my wife, Jo, is an acupuncturist. So drilling a hole into a picture where I feel like there's energy, like in Chinese medicine, we have meridian lines that you find energetic points for change or for healing. In every picture that I make are these meridian lines that I can then cane and give it more energy and activate. Here you'll find the canes are activating the edges or the boundary of this owl. And I put little bits of titanium white on them so that when sunlight hits them, they illuminate like lights, like little, like little LEDs. And then the owl is really a landscape with inside her. So this is called Monsteria Owl, where I'm paying homage to the great Monsteria plant, which is this one here that has grown these enormous roots um, to live above soil and it's tapping into the soil below, but its knowledge is so clever, is that it can live in a tree and drop roots. And I think as artists, that's so valuable, is if there's challenges in your life, how do you drop these creative tapper roots that give you stability and give you capability? And I think that's one of the paths that an artist has to find, is finding a crack in the monotony of life or the busyness of life to claim our space to make and practice. And I am paying homage to the owl who's like a great gatekeeper for me to my kind of imagining world. This was shot on an iPhone and it's blown up on the printer. And the beauty of that is the binary code is already broken down and starting to collapse. And so I can follow the, the pigment kind of striations and, and make these geometric shapes. And so what I'm doing is I'm eating away like a termite and then I'm following the striations of the bark and that's kind of the, the mapping for me to, to learn how to carve and ordain this tree is to dive into the tonality and that's what my eye tracks. It tracks the tonality and I carve you know, I move up through it. And then as I step back, it just starts all becoming like cherry blossom, like, like it, the whole, all the leaves will be carved. The tree is very important to me because I've grown up with this tree probably for about 15 years and the kids have been babies here. And this one tree I've been painting, maybe four win prizes have been this tree, um, a mangrove, gray mangrove. This thing is beyond what sells at the hardware store. It's an extension of my hand. It's an extension of my feelings. It's just uh, a magical element if I go beyond the plastic, you know? And I think that's the imagining world, is being able to go beyond this, this framework, go beyond and, uh, and turn, re-sculpt our universe in the imagining. And I think that's where a lot of us are finding that's not being permitted, you know, we all have to follow, even software, we have to follow structures that yeah. are presented to us. So now is an amazing time to try new things like playing with clay, letting the subconscious come up and take us, take us places that we've never been to before. <laughs>